Do you think that it's possible to learn to live better while producing and consuming less? That would mean renouncing to fancy lifestyles, and we will live a life based on modest material and energy needs. That is the essence of the degrowth economic movement. But let's go backwards a little bit. The contemporary degrowth movement can trace its roots back to the anti-industrialist trends of the 19th century. Degrowth as a term was coined in 1972 by Austrian-French social philosopher André Gors. As a movement, degrowth started to take off in the early 2000s. Modern degrowth protagonists include French economist Serge Latouche, who argues that society's current model of economic growth is unsustainable. What is degrowth? Degrowth probably means shrinking rather than growing economies. So we use less resources and put well-being ahead of profit. What is degrowth trying to do? The objective of degrowth is to reframe humanity's goals to address the climate emergency by dramatically scaling down aggregate energy and resource use, back into balance with the living world. Advocates of the growth are quick to point out that the idea is fundamentally different from a recession. Since the growth is a planned reduction of energy and resource use, a recession, however, is an unplanned event that can exacerbate inequality and reduce well-being. Jason Hickel, an economic anthropologist and senior lecturer at Goldsmiths University of London, said, Ultimately, this is the core insight of degrowth. Right now, we assume that every sector of the economy must grow, all the time, regardless of whether or not we actually need it. A more rational approach would be to think about what sectors we actually need to grow, like public transportation and renewable energy, and what sectors are clearly too big and should be scaled down, like USB production, private cars, the arms industry, advertising, and so on. Practical degrowth actions might include buying less stuff, growing your own food, and using empty houses instead of building new ones, the website Economic Help suggests. In practice, it is likely to result in a slower rate of GDP growth, or perhaps even in a reduction in GDP. But scholars say this should not be a cause for concern because GDP is not an accurate indicator of progress. What about the arguments against it? John Van Rinan, professor of economics at the London School of Economics, Sir, there were three considerations as to why an emphasis on growth would be important when it comes to addressing the climate emergency. He cited the importance of green innovation, more appropriate measures of growth that incorporate the depletion of natural capital, and argued good productivity growth would be more likely to coincide with a political will to enact climate policies. For all those reasons, I don't think that there is any necessary connection between growth and environmental degradation. In fact, I think that growth can be a way of actually helping us deal with the problems that we face with climate change if we think about growth in a proper way. Another counter-argument to the growth is that many countries have shrunk their emissions while also growing GDP. They have done this using technologies like renewable energy. As we can see from the table, countries that have absolutely decoupled emissions from GDP between 2005 and 2019 this includes the United States, Japan, Mexico, Germany, United Kingdom, just to mention a few of them. First and foremost, there is no still macroeconomic model that can describe a stable economy which does not rely on growth. So far, the modern economy is structurally reliant on economic growth for its stability. Secondly, as most people in modern societies are dependent on those growth-oriented institutions, the challenge of a degrowth transition also lies in the individual resistance to move away from growth. Bowman, Alexander, and Borden suggest on their paper that even when it's committed to degrowth, citizens have no option but decades of market growth buy-in to pay the rent or mortgage. Because of this, land privatization is a structural impediment to moving forward that makes degrowth economically and politically unviable. The final challenge for a degrowth society would require a shift from industrial agriculture to less intensive and more sustainable agricultural practices, such as permaculture or organic agriculture. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Created using Powtoon.